Welcome to the Scottish Right Journal podcast, an audio presentation of the Scottish Right Journal, brought to you by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Right, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World. This week's article is The Monument of the Battle of Nations in Leipzig, a Masonic Treasure by Simon Weisenberger, 33rd degree, and comes from the January-February 2021 issue of the Scottish Right Journal. The German city of Leipzig is famous for many reasons, including its trade fair, which harks back to the Middle Ages. Leipzig makes its appearance in Brother Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's play Faust, in which the devil Mephistopheles and the scholar Faust enter Auerbach's Keller, a pub which still exists today and goes back to the 15th century. Of most interest to Masons, however, is perhaps the monument of the Battle of Leipzig. In the winter of 2017, a group of brethren and I set off on a private guided tour of the impressive monument of the Battle of Leipzig, just outside the city center of Leipzig after our lodge meeting. Our guide, Brother Frank Heinrich, author of the book, The Testament of the Freemasons, The Monument of the Battle of Leipzig, had visited our lodge that day. I am heavily indebted to Brother Heinrich and his co-author, Rolf Affelt, for many comments in this article regarding the symbolism of the monument. The monument is a gargantuan edifice which stands right before entering the city center. Resembling a Mesopotamian ziggurat, the monument commemorates a bloody three-day battle which took place in 1813 in Leipzig. The Prussian army valiantly defeated Napoleon's invading troops, and by battle's end, 100,000 men lost their lives in combat. This battle was a powerful halt to Napoleon's megalomaniac designs of expansion as Prussian patriots liberated the city. The monument was built in 1913, precisely a hundred years after this glorious but bloody battle. The architects who undertook this project included various Freemasons, such as Brother Clemens Tima, a member of Apollo Lodge No. 212 in Leipzig. The project was so important to Clemens Tima that his final wish was to be buried in his temple's crypt and memorial, but this did not come to pass. He is instead buried not far from this memorial. To this day, Apollo Lodge, founded 1799, holds quarterly meetings in the monument, and it is a privilege for many visiting Central European Masons to experience ritual work in such an August setting. Above the main entrance on the exterior of the monument, there is a central and enormous statue brandishing a flaming sword and shield, representing the Archangel Michael. Above this figure is the sun emitting its rays. On the top of the building is the final stone, the lower half of a cube, which is the crown of the monument and represents the geometrical symbol of perfection. The archangel stands guard with a stern face and helmet, reminding all that this is a monument of war as well as peace. On the upper part of the monument, and standing in a circle looking downwards, are a group of Teutonic Knight statues that commemorate all those who perished in the battle that freed the Prussians from the French invasion. The symbol of the Archangel Michael is prominent and is tied to the battle which took place, yet it also serves as a symbolic warning against future horrors. Unfortunately, later events in German history proved that the historical lesson to prevent future bloodshed was lost, especially on the Nazis as they occupied this building at the close of World War II. I would also note that Michael's shield is bigger than the sword, which I interpret to mean that defense is more important than offense for a nation and as people. The stern face is a reminder of how valiantly the Leipzigers fought, even though they were outnumbered by the Napoleonic forces with their mercenaries. The Archangel is not merely a fighter, but shows a polarity of sorts. Through a strong defense, we also have peace. Thus, the Archangel is understood as standing guard against the forces of darkness. The figure of Michael has its equivalent in many cultures. Horus avenging his father Osiris against his evil brother Set, or Indra in the Hindu tradition being the protector and defender of the gods and who slays the dragons to maintain peace and harmony. Furthermore, Christians around the world to this day pray to the Archangel Michael asking for protection from the forces of darkness that disrupt one's inner and outer peace. He is sometimes called the face of Christ, who in an esoteric sense is fighting our false selves and demons to reconnect us to our true self and essence. The symbol of the flaming sword of Michael is also found in the Christian-based Freemasonry of the German Freimaurer Orden with lodges dedicated to him with names such as Zum Flammenden Schwert, to the Flaming Sword, 
or St. Michael's Lodge, among others. Entering the building, there is an epic story told in the architecture, and although it is a relatively recent work of architecture, the wisdom of the operative masons of the past seems to resonate from the walls. Inside, there are further majestic statues with gigantic heads, all around the wall with two guards in front of each head. The two guards are again representations of the Archangel Michael, and the heads are intended to represent Frederick Barbarossa, Holy Roman Emperor and early challenger to total papal rule. Barbarossa, among other accomplishments, led his battalion of knights to reconquer the Holy Land during the Third Crusade. At the age of 70, he led his troops to battle, fending off attacks from both the Byzantines and the Turks. Although he died before reaching Jerusalem, his monumental feats led him to become the inspiration of the Teutonic Knights. Frederick was also known to be devoted to St. George and led prayers with his men to the saint. St. George is portrayed in classic pose as the saint on horseback slaying a dragon with a spear, a theme reminiscent of the Archangel Michael slaying the dragon with his flaming sword. In the interpretation of Brother Heinrich, the motif is in line with his two guards and the central defender of the monument. Brother Tima seems to have linked the might of Barbarossa's victories and his divine protection in battle to the protection the Prussians had during the battle against the French. The monument contains a myriad of other symbolic treasures which are found inside. This monument has many symbols which give Masonic visitors pause and which may take time to internalize, for the monument contains the virtues of wisdom, strength, and beauty with harmony permeating all. In fact, many see this monument as a call to peace rather than simply a memorial of a battle. Darkness must be understood before we can appreciate the light, and this monument's message is exactly that. Masonic travelers wending their way to Leipzig will experience this and so much more in a visit to the monument of the Battle of Leipzig in one of Germany's historic cities. Any accompanying photographs or citations for this article can be found in the corresponding print edition. The Scottish Rite Journal is published by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World. Mark Dreisenstock, 33rd Degree, KCCH Managing Editor. I'm your host, Matt Bowers.